and welcome to this video so in this video i will show you that what are the server components and what are the client components of the nextjs version 13.4 so we will see that how the server component works and how the client component works and i will show you some of the differences between them and in the last i will show you that what to use when according to your requirements so without wasting much time let's get started into this video so i've created a brand new nextjs application from complete scratch you can see we have the page.tsx which is a custom ui for a route we have the app route which means it will render on the home page and there you can see i am rendering the high over there and there you can see we have the package.json and in there i have the next.js version 13.4.6 which is the latest version of the next.js so now we will see that what are the server components and what are the client components so by default in the next.js version 13.4 and inside the app directory all of the files and all of the components are by default server components of the Next.js. You can see this is a page and this is a layout. So all of the result files are by default server components. So if I show you the difference between the server, you can see if I render the log statement over here, like you can see I am rendered. So here you can see, you can see the I am rendered onto the compilation process. You can see I am showing you the compilation. You can see wait, it is compiling. So once we are saving the file, then it is compiling the page. And then you can see once the page is being compiled, you can see the HTML is generated. And inside that we have the log statement. And there you can see if I open the application, then we won't be seeing the log here because it was rendered on the server side and not onto the client. And after the compilation process, we are seeing the app rendered inside the terminal window. So this is a server component, but you can see once I move on to the top of the page and there you can see if I render the directive of the use client. So here you can see if I mentioned the use client on the top of the page, you can see once I will save, you can see now we won't be seeing the I'm rendered over here, but once you move on to the application, you can see hi and there you can see, you can see the console log window. You can see inside that you have the I am rendered because it was a client component. So you can see the I am rendered over here. But I am going to show you one another difference you can see. Once I will save any file you can see. Again you can see the I am rendered over here. But why? So you can see this is the client component. But you can still see the I am rendered into the server side. So there is a hidden thing. You can see the layout is also a file. And there you can see the layout is a server component. And the page is a client component. So that's why you can see once the layout is being generated. Then you can see the page was the children. And in the page you have the log statement. So once the layout was generated, so it was generated on the server. So that's why you are seeing the log window here. But you can see once I will add the use client inside the layout as well. We have the use client over there. Once I will save, so you can see now you won't see this log statement inside the terminal window during the compilation process. So you can see once you save anything or once you do anything, you won't be seeing the AMP rendered onto the client. Because now both the layout and both the page are the client components and not the server one. You can see now inside this now you can see you have the app rendered statements because now the whole application is working on the client side so that's how it works so this was a basic example of showing you the difference between what are the server components and how they work and what are the client components and how they work so let's see some of the more differences between them so here you can see what are the differences between the server and the client components with the next yes version 13 and it was a concept of react version 18. So you can see the first area that we have is the rendering environment. So the server components are rendered during the server site at the time of compilation and at the time of generating the initial HTML page and the client components works on the client side. So initially you get the blank HTML page and then the content is being dynamically inserted into the DOM. So that's the first difference between the rendering environment of the server and the client components. And inside the second area, we can see the bundle size. So the server components, the whole content is being included in the initial bundle. But if we see the client components, so the initial bundle is being generated and then everything is stored inside the cache. So that is the second difference between the bundle size of the server components and the client components of the next year's version 13.4. And the third area that we see is the user interaction. So the user interaction is not available inside the server components because they are rendered as a static site. You can see inside the static sites, you cannot interact with anything. But inside the client components, you have the user interaction part. 
So inside the client components, you can have some of the forms, some of the buttons, some of the links and all of the things. But onto the server components, those are the static pages. Like you see the block pages, like you cannot interact the block. You can only view something that is available onto the page. So user interaction won't be available onto the server, but it would be definitely available onto the client because in the client, we have the access to the DOM. So these were the differences of the server and the client components of the next JS version 13. And let's see that what to use when. So when to use which one. So let's see that. So if you have a requirement of rendering the static content over there, then using the server components would be the best available option for you because you have the static content like you have the initial HTML page of your application, like you have the home page of your application, which won't be having any dynamic content. So the server components would be the optimal choice for that. And you won't be having the client component for that. So according to that requirement, according to the first requirement of the rendering static content, the server components will be the best choice for you. And if you want to render the interactive content, again, like the forms, like the buttons, like some fields or like some games, if you want to have some games as well, then the server components won't be a good option because now you don't have the static data, but onto the server, you need some interactivity from the user. And let's see the third requirement. If you want to use the React tokens like the use state, use effect, and more React tokens, then server components won't be a good choice because they are not available during the server time. So React tokens are not available on the server because they are rendered and they are generated as an HTML file. But onto the client components, you can use the React tokens like the use state and the use effect or any of the custom hooks as well. So if the requirement is React hooks, then server components won't be the optimal choice, but the client components would be the best available choice. Let's see the fourth requirement. So if you want to render the content that is generated onto the server side database and not onto the client side, then the server components would be the best available choice. Because if you want to render something that is directly available onto the database, now you won't need any interaction or anything then the server components would be the best choice. And in the server components, you can directly fetch the data from a custom DB or anything with that because they are not available onto the client. So client cannot see any of the credentials like API keys or database password. So you're completely secured onto the server components, but you cannot use the database interactivity and all of the things onto the client components because the code is still available onto the browser's DOM. So anyone can see the API keys or the passwords of your database. So fourth option of the requirement, like the rendering the content, which is generated onto the database. So the server components would be the best choice because you have the security and you can render the database generated content. And if we see the last requirement, which is the rendering some static content and some interactivity. So if you have some static content, like you have the initial homepage of your application, like you have some blocks as well, you can show all of the blocks. You can have some blocks onto that. So then the server components would be the best available choice. So static content can be used on the server components. So that are okay. But if you have some of the functionalities like commenting on a blog or liking or disliking the blog, then also you can use the client component as well. And you can use both server and the client components with the next year's version 13. So you can use both of the components altogether, but you need to follow the instructions of the next year's 13 that how to use both of them inside same application. So according to fifth requirement, so even if you have some static content like database interactivity or so many things, and if you have some user interactivity, like commenting on a blog or liking the blog, then you can use the server and client components both in just a single next year starting application. So these are the differences. So these are the examples and these are the requirements of when to use fetch one of the server components and the client components of the next year's version 13. So these are everything about the server and the client components of the next year's version 13. So if you found this content as helpful, then you can please like the video. You can also comment as well and sharing your views. So that's it for this video. And you can also subscribe as well because that motivates me to create the videos like this. So that's it for this lecture. So best of luck and thank you.